So we are in UBC's Malcolm Knapp Research Forest. This is a typical coastal needly forest with the three species, Western Red Cedar, Douglas Fir, and Western Hemlock, which would have been cut over through much of this forest, but allowed to regrow. Uh, this stand is probably about 60, 70 years old. We also have a couple of broadleaf species, including this uh, big leaf maple right above me, uh, and an understory of sword fern, red huckleberry, salau, and other uh, native understory herbs and shrubs. So you'd expect then that this would be a podzol, given the sort of temperate, rainy West Coast marine climate and the coniferous vegetation that will create a, a rather acidic A horizon uh, with very slow to decompose uh, leaf litter. But what's interesting about this site is the parent materials. Now they're glacial like much of BC, and as ice, that big ice sheet receded 10,000 years ago, uh, glacial till was laid down across much of our province. But here you can see that it occurs in what can be a typical sequence. The first is this layer of what we call basal or lodgment till. And that extends from about here, and I'm gonna try to dig it, it's very difficult to dig. Uh, and this is crushed material that would have been compacted under the weight of the ice. So lodgment till then is, is deposited from end glacial or subglacial under the glacier material that is really compacted under ice. Again, it has a variety of materials. This is a piece of granodiorite, a, a rock, um, but also all of this fine material that really is, is crushed silt and clay, and it's almost cemented. It's very difficult for plants to root in that. And that's probably sitting on top of the bedrock here, which is granodiorite, igneous rocks. Above it, from about here, we hit what is ablation till, and that is very typical. It's material that is laid down uh, by the ice as it melts. It's carried on or in, so it's supra-glacial uh, material. And it's, it's fairly uh, loosely packed. Uh, again, a mix of coarse materials. There's another block of granodiorite in there, sub-rounded, um, but also you'll have fines as well. And that is what the plants are rooting in. Now, the other thing that's unique to this site is that there was a large glacier dam lake just to the east of here, and when it burst, when the dam, the ice dam failed, all of that water rushed across the landscape and it resorted this ablation till. And what it did was it removed many of the clays and silts, the fine material, and left behind perhaps some of the, the sands that it was carrying uh, as it slowed down uh, uh, under and spread out over here. So we have in this uh, reworked ablation till, we have a fairly sandy parent material with some coarse material that's been left behind in there as well. Not as fine as you'd expect for a glacier till, much more sandy and well-drained. So let's just have a look at the soil. The organic horizon is probably around where I've pinned my tape and it's maybe a few inches thick. It's an LFH. It is probably a mix of litter that's undecomposed, fibric and humic material, which is quite decomposed. But below it, we enter the mineral horizon, the topmost mineral horizon, which is an A horizon. And I suspect it's right around here. It's much, much darker or blacker in color. And it's a mix of mineral material and fairly granular or crumb in texture. Lots and lots of fine roots in here that you can't see, but I can. Yeah, and I'm gonna tell you that's a medium uh, granular or crumb texture. If we move down, we start to see, and I can see a much lighter layer at the bottom of the A. And it's a little bit grayish, but it's the color of some of the bare mineral grains, the quartz, sands and so on and so forth, which is a sign of, of leaching and alluviation. And then if we go further still, you might notice the orangey color of the soil right here exposed. And that's probably our B horizon. And it's an alluvial horizon. It has received materials from above, including some organic matter, but also some fine iron oxides, which as iron does, it's reddish and it's coating the mineral grains and giving them a, staining them a little bit orangey red. And so that's, that's a slightly oranger color there and not as black as the A horizon above it. And then we hit our impermeable lodgement till.
just to take a look at the effect of having our lodgment till here, our impermeable lodgment till, probably at the end of the rainy season in the spring, there is quite a bit of water that's percolated down through the A and B horizons here that gets stuck on the top of the sea. So you might even have a perched water table. And some of that stuff will find cracks through the lodgment till and eventually seep out uh, below it. Uh, but again, we might actually find some evidence of waterlogging at the bottom of this soil at the end of the growing season. And that's, that's our soil.